That is all for today's lesson. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Eric. I'm Ty. And we are Shantoto Cast. Uh, uh, why are we ending this week, Ty? Why, where um, are we ending? What's up? We're ending this week because I found a really cool pair of sunglasses. Okay. And for some odd reason, whenever I wear them, uh, a lot of billboards just so say obey. Weird. I, I need to figure that out. Um, huh. That's funky. Uh, well, yeah. while Ty gets his brain and his sunglasses checked out, yeah. uh, we're going to be going over the survey responses uh yeah. some of you guys have been asking us about this and waiting for it mm. for a long time i know i've been and bugged about it by basically every community <laughs> lead in chicago yeah. at one point or another and um, we did put it out a little while ago and we have been a little slow to get to it yeah but we were really wanted to be sure people actually could respond to it like jokes aside yeah like i could say that because we were lazy with getting the resp responses compiled but like we did actually really want people to get a chance to uh, kind of get their answers in and, and find out about it. We've been posting it on the Reddit and the Facebook yeah. groups, and yeah. I threw it in our chat like two or three times. Yeah. Also, really quick shout out to the Reddit people because we put it up without their permission, and they very kindly email us and like, hey, can you not? We'll let it slide, but can you not do that? And we we're sorry, like we're yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we already sent them that. back. Uh, we sent them back an email saying like, hey, my Whoops, bad, yeah. my bad, whatever. We'll figure it out. Um, so. But anyway, let's get into the thick of things and start talking about these survey responses. Yeah. Uh, I've compiled a list of the answers. Um, I had to summarize some of the open-ended stuff because there were a lot to go through. Mm. Uh, we had 128 responses. Uh, I don't know if people can delete their responses, but I had previously seen a higher reported number of those. Um, so either Google goofed or people deleted their responses or their accounts or yeah. I, don't, I don't know we'll what yeah. one way or another uh, we have 128 responses overall uh, most of these questions are lacking one response because it doesn't count ours yeah um <laughs> we answered on the shantoto cast uh account just to accident. test it out yeah um so uh well, let's get into things uh, so the first question we asked was how long have you been playing final fantasy tcg uh and the overwhelming um majority of you guys said that it's been more than 12 months um like i want to say this is about 50 percent of answers maybe Over. three fifths uh it's let's see because it's 74 out of 127 yeah it's over half like it's right yeah that's definitely like over half closer it's, to 60 percent um yeah if i opened up my calculator on my nifty phone we could find out exactly the ratio does it make but, calls though uh maybe <laughs> i do have at&t oh got him wow Sorry. uh <laughs> that's not whatever anyway it is over half um which honestly we i mentioned this literally we've had this up on the screen for a little while and i mentioned before we started recording that kind of surprises me um and i don't mean this in like any sort of mean way but a Eric, lot of the players we know have not been, they're younger in the game. Yeah, yeah. A lot of our play group is the 6 to 12 months, so I was expecting that to be the larger one. Yeah. And then on top of that, in these last 6 to 12 months is when we've seen the game kind of explode a little bit more. Yeah. When we've seen the competitive side getting a lot more attention, mm -hmm. and uh, Plasia and Squeenix kind of putting a little bit more... Um, time into it which is funny because we just got the announcement today that we'll be having less crystal cups than last year yeah and a really weird like national competitive format for yeah. na but we'll that's a whole different topic to yeah. discuss. Uh, maybe eventually we'll get into that but sure um, yeah uh but yeah and then five of you actually said you took a break from the game uh mm -hmm. we didn't ask when or how long that was yeah. um we kind of left that up to your discretion or, or to you uh, it doesn't really make a difference to us how long that break was. Uh, but five players of the, who answered said that they took a break from the game, however yeah. long, um, for whatever yeah. reason. I feel like that's one of those ones, obviously the, the, the every number on that survey is going to get larger as the game gets older. Right. But I feel like the take a break is going to grow exponentially. Oh, yeah. Like, especially coming from Yu-Gi-Oh, where I took a three-year break, or I took a five-year break. You took a five-year break? I took an 11-year break. Yeah, <laughs> and I know so many people are like, yeah, I took a year break from Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah, whatever. And same with Magic. A lot of people, I took a break from Magic after I started playing in college. Yeah. And then, you know, I just kind of came back to it because of Commander. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's kind of interesting to just see five out of 100, because if this... Let's say, like, let's say we got, like, 130 people from, like, Chicago who play Magic. Yeah. Like, all those numbers would be, like... Way different. Oh, yeah. They'd yeah. be so different. But anyway, um, should we move on to the next question? Yeah. Let's move so on to the next question. The next one is, what category of player are you? And we separated this into casual, hobbyist, competitor, lifestyle, collector, or other. Um, 
I think we got all the bases, so I'm really curious of what the other is. Yeah. But it might also just be like, oh, maybe it's like an artist or something. But anyway. Um, um, yeah, so this one with the decent majority, not large majority, but yeah. decent majority was competitor, uh, which yeah. doesn't surprise us at all. Most people we've met uh, in person or online want to take this game seriously in some fashion. Yeah. And then right behind it is Hobbyist at 35. Right. Um, mind you, 53, com- 53 people said competitive, 35 said hobbyists, um, and then casual was 18, lifestyle and collector is 10, and then other was one. Um, this one doesn't surprise me so much. Right. Um, a big thing about that I've noticed about Final Fantasy, and I think there might be another question about this, is um, a lot of people come from other card games. Right. Especially a card game like Magic, especially a card game like Yu-Gi-Oh!, you know, you are kind of pushed towards competitive, mm-hmm. so you it doesn't don't really surprise get a choice. me. Yeah. Exactly. So it doesn't surprise me that people who come over to Final Fantasy do want to get competitive. Well, especially considering our local crowd, who a lot of those people did come over from other card games. They're yeah. like, hey, I like this one, but how does this play? Yeah. I, so, I don't think that there is anybody in... There's probably... There's very few... There is there only anybody in our group that this is like their first card game? Actually, there's quite a few in chat that don't uh, actually get to play very often. Yeah. Um, a lot of the people, like friends of friends that got added in. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of the more casual players who they don't want to take it seriously because they're not experienced yet. Yeah. At least that's my experience meeting those people and chatting with them um, and how infrequently they pop up in chat. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, that tells us nothing of the greater you know, demographic of all the different... I mean, we threw this We threw this survey, uh, to be clear, into the Illinois, uh, North America, and the global pages. Yeah. Uh, we also threw it onto the Reddit. Uh, and total, there were about... Um, what, was it, what was it? There were a total of maybe 30,000 players yeah. across all that, and you have to account for some overlap. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So... Uh, to get these responses out of that amount of people, this is about one percent at best. Yeah. Of our all all our all the players in the world. Yeah. Um, with those that speak English, yeah. also keep yeah, that in account yeah. too. That is kind of because like a lot of people issue. looked at the posts. Yeah. We got a lot of post response, but not a lot of these people actually answered. Yeah. We're English speaking, and a lot of the world isn't. Yeah, yeah, and then especially when you post on like and then <laughs> right in North like, America and or global. not any in global because yeah the global uh, yeah. you have to account for the French people, the Germans, the yeah. Swedes, the Italians, uh, the everybody Asian else. Players, go like, the Asian the, players. Yeah, there's tons. And there's obviously however many languages in in greater Asia. Asia, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, it's a it's a big yeah. number, um, but anyway. So yeah, uh, category of players didn't surprise us at all. Yeah. And um, then moving on, another follow up question to that is: What type of players are most represented in your play group? Yeah. Um, and this one was this, see this one's a little interesting because it's a little a little different. Yeah. So casual came in at thirty three. Hobbyist came in at 25, Competitor was 54. And then the rest were relatively negligible. Yeah. Lifestyle, 7, Collector, 3, and then No Local Group is 3. Yeah, th- which, you, you three poor bastards yeah. were sorry. And it's kind of... I was actually expecting that number to be higher. Well, it kind of is. A big thing that I see in like on the Reddit and stuff is like, I can't find a local play group. So, it's funny that you say that because the No Local Group thing is brought up again later mm. by a lot more people. So, they just didn't say it here, but... That that's just them saying, you know, oh, I, well, I would, if I did have a group, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> here's where I put my group. If I had one, yeah, if I had um, one, yeah. <laughs> so and then we right after that followed up again by yeah. asking, do you wish your glu- local group was more or less competitive? Yeah. Um, so we separated this into, I wish they were more competitive. With the forty three of people said mm-hmm. that, uh, I wish they'd cool the jets. Was ten people. Uh, and it's just right for me was 74. So the, the majority of people said, you know, I like the general atmosphere and, you know, kind of demeanor of my local group. Um, but a good chunk of you do say, I wish we were more serious about the game and I wish we could have, uh, you know, a bit more of a competitive spirit about it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that was partially our play group for a little bit. Oh, That's very much so. That's usually our play group during the kind of dip between competitive yeah. season. Yeah. Because everybody's just kind of running in with just like kind of goofy stuff. <laughs> The jank and, is real. Yeah, uh, the jank in our play group gets real. Well, I um, remember when we first were getting our group really, like, really established. Uh, I remember David and Bill were mm-hmm. like the two that really pushed us into competitive. Yeah, and then I'd argue more Jeff, David. Like, yeah, David was super analytical about everything. Yeah. Shout like, out to David, yeah, by the way. Who again, showed up to his first tournament with Turbo Ice at the height <laughs> of its popularity. <laughs> Fuck you, David. <laughs> 
but he, you know he he oh, comes a, from magic, so yeah. he, he was able to immediately see, okay, this is what's good. Well, I'm gonna he came from it. hardcore magic, let's be yeah, clear. Yeah. So he, he, I think he played both modern and standard, yeah. which can take the game very intensely. Yeah, obviously. Um, um, yeah, so it... Can you scroll up really quick? Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, to see this kind of... I'm a little happy that a lot of people said, oh, it's just right. Like, it's 74% of people... Or 74 people said, it's just right. And I feel like that's kind of even where our playgroup is right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm really um, happy with where we are. Because we do have these players that are playing Jank, and we see, you know, Chocobo Tribal, and mm -hmm. we see just these kind of goofy decks that are kind of fun to play against. Or like Aaron's uh, Onion Knights. Yeah, or um, <laughs> Matt's been running the really weird Doga Oh, that's Ridia right. deck. That's yeah. really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really... It's frustrating <clears throat> to play against, but it's very fun when you, like, look back at it, because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, man, that was such a goofy play. Um, so... I really kind of agree with this. I'm not surprised that there's a lot of people in our same situation. Yeah. And I'm glad that um, a lot of those people do say that because that means that they're enjoying the game about as much as they can. Yeah. Uh, and I know a few guys from our group and, you know, they, they also responded to this. Yeah. So if you guys are in this it's just right demographic, then we're, thank you. We're, we're glad that, uh, I'm glad that at least the TOs can provide that environment for yeah. you. Um, um, so what type of deck fits your play style the most? This is a question I was really looking for. Oh yeah, to. I was super excited for this uh, one. And oddly enough, this is the most even question. Yeah, this is very balanced. And I, I understand it. So Control clocked in at 53, Aggro clocked on at 57, Combo at 42, and a balance of two or more at 41. So I let people choose more than one answer for this one, mm -hmm. and most people who, who, who selected a balance of two or more also responded to clicking other stuff. So, like, the kind of skewed things a bit. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, but overall, a lot of people, they have a balance. Like, I have a balance. Yeah. I like I have a couple decks of a little of everything. Yeah. Uh, not all meta, but, like, yeah. 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 And I, this is another thing. So, we did our episode in which we talked about control a girl combo. Mm -hmm. um, and a big thing that we said about it is, you know, there's only so much combo in the game. Uh, but it still doesn't surprise me that 42 people answered yes to combo. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised And at all. on top of that, this is kind of talking about the larger what kind of deck yep. you like to play, not just in Final Fantasy. I'm guessing a good chunk of that 42 is going to be Yu-Gi-Oh! players, <laughs> because of the, just the raw nature of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, play style right now. I don't know, combo is really fun in Magic. I'll be That's fair, honest. that is also fair. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we which, don't know. Yeah, uh, but it makes a lot of sense. The, once again, I think so far this has been our most even spread. I wouldn't be surprised if it is the most even spread. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think we have uh, one more that's close. Yeah. But we'll get there. I, I do. I spent like four hours compiling all this day to day. Um, right. It was exhausting. Um, but anyway, so uh, then the next question we asked was how many times a week, on average, can you play? Yeah. Um, and so 14 of you said you're not able to play. Like, at all. Zero. Av on average. It's very yeah. rare that you get to play. Uh, 84 of you said one to two days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, three to five days a week was 18 of you. And 11 of you actually can play every and any day of the week that you want. See, I the way that I look at it is that the, those 11 people are, like, the tournament grinders. Like, yeah. I was, I've been talking to E-Man a little bit about um, when he was at Worlds and stuff. And he mm -hmm. was like, oh, yeah, I was playing every day. Like, we were always on Octagon. We mm -hmm. were always on... Uh, untapped. Yeah, you're testing nonstop. Going. So that's why. I, so I'm not surprised to see that 11 people said every day. Yeah. Uh, but 84 people slotting into one, one to two. That's almost our entire play group. Yeah, basically. That's actually. That's a. That's a little over. That's a, that's yeah because we have like 50 something people in our chat and we've yeah. uh, we've knocked a few out. So yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, thinking about our events, because we have, for reference, we have an event Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, nothing Friday, and then people usually meet up Saturday. We have a variable Friday. Yeah. We have a variable Friday, and then people casually meet up on Saturdays, but yeah. it flip-flops. Yeah, exactly. So, but we have three days a week where people can play yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. So, it doesn't surprise... Uh, Chicago very much does a one and two, and I assume it's the, kind of the same situation with a lot of play groups, where mm -hmm. it's just, like, we only have these three places to play... And I can't make it up to one of them. So it's actually funny, we'll get to that later, but most people actually only have one place to play at best. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. At least the people who responded. Yeah. But we'll get to um, that. So um, then... So what primary obstacles block you from playing more, if anything? This was a big thing. This is a main reason why we did the survey, is um, we well, had some kind of talk in our group where we were like, well, I can't go because I have this, I can't go, I have this. And it, it kind of got to this point where we were just... The community we, leaders were having a bit of a, a discussion about it, and we were very concerned because we're like, we're not seeing players. 
what can we do about it? Some people were more uh, doom and gloom about it, uh, mm-hmm. very cynical and pessimistic. Others, others of us were playing the patient route, uh, yeah. going the patient game. Um, and so we kind of wanted answers to why people weren't showing up. Yeah. Um, and we got answers, obviously, outside of our local group. But yeah. And mind you, this, this uh, I forget, do you remember the exact day that the survey got posted? No. Okay. Um, basically, when we posted this, the game was in a little bit of a lull. A really we bad just, lull, We were yeah. between sets and we didn't have another Crystal Cup coming up for a while. Yeah. So there was nothing to really shake up the meta. This was right after Opus 9 dropped. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Because we uh, just yeah. got Opus 10. Okay. So, so this is like right when Opus 9 was like kind of... It was a, kind of at the end of its welcome, where people were like, you know, playing it, and they already started figuring it out. Um, so, out of all of these, uh, one person said school. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, mind you, 93 people answered this one. Yeah, with this one, one it was an yeah. optional question. Yeah. One person said school. 11 people said work. 15 people said distance. Uh, six people just said general free time dash energy. Um, 31 people said not enough players or player avail- availability. 31, yikes. Yeah. Uh, nowhere to play was about four. Um, yeah, that kid- one was variable. Kids and family was five. Money was one. Um, indirect oh. or multiple answers was about 20. Yeah, there was a lot of overlap. And then there were three scheduling timing conflicts. So yeah. this is another one that's generally, or on the surface looks even, but not enough players... It's is 31 little, of you. Yeah. And that, that one, I understand. Yeah. Um, that one is part of the reason we wanted to start a community mm-hmm. is because we didn't have enough players and we just wanted more people to love and appreciate this game as much as we do. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It really is hard. Actually, we'll get to it later, but we had quite a few people who responded asking, hey, can you please give me some advice on starting a community? Yeah. Um, which we actually, that kind of sparked us to do that. Commu- that episode I did with Bill yeah. uh, before which we'll we link found in... Ty who had yeah. disappeared yeah. Uh, which we'll link into the description, <laughs> we'll link that uh, in the description and then we'll reference it again at the end of the episode yeah. to remind you uh, just so you're not clicking out of this one just being like oh okay never mind yep. um, um, but yeah, but so yeah. This, this one doesn't super surprise me again like work work being 11, distance being 15 um, even in Chicago even though everything is pretty close we still have that mm-hmm. distance yeah. issue because like I love going to Water Tower and I love going to Good Games and Dice um, I can't make it out to first aid only because it's just out of my range, mm-hmm. and I have trouble getting to Nick's events yep. because it's just it's just so the drive, out there. Yeah. and it's uh, I can imagine in less populated areas, yep. um, anywhere people, more rural or less. where they have to drive like an hour to get. Yeah, to their and like we have the convenience of a dense city, like an yeah. urban environment. For yeah. everybody who doesn't have that, I mean, your LGS. Some people say their LGS is like two hours away. Yeah, that's yeah, freaking yeah. awful. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, you guys. I feel for you guys. That's rough. That's why, but hey, there is Octagon and there's Untap. As much as they might suck for some people, it kind of is the best option. Yeah. So give it a shot. Yeah, ultimately, Octagon, if you can't find a local playgroup or if you just want to be able to be able to play constantly online, or as we said in an earlier question, to be able to do that, like, three to five times a week or mm-hmm. even every day a week octagon and untaps probably your two best bets you can post online and find players and there's also open rooms usually yeah yeah um for anybody in the illinois chat well everybody in our chat knows all about this yep. but um a friend of ours avery does um octagon mondays octagon mm-hmm. and untap mondays yep uh where they just kind of grind out a couple games and that's always yeah, fun. it usually goes pretty once well. you get used to both of them they're fine yeah it just takes a lot of adjusting to yeah um We'll get an official client someday, I hope, yeah. maybe, but perhaps. To, to tie that into our next question, uh, so where do you play the most? Um, so and most people, well, so let's just go down the list here. Yeah. Uh, 15 people actually play at home. Yeah. Um, three people play just in a public place, be it like a library or like McDonald's, you know, McDonald's or whatever. Yeah. Um, nine people play regularly online. 70 people play at their local shop makes sense unsurprising uh 29 people play at you know they they bounce between two or more places uh and one person gave a very unclear answer um but that does that's okay that doesn't yeah. matter <laughs> um and so this one doesn't really surprise me that much um i mean you and i balance mostly shop and home a lot. Yeah. Um, the amount of times where you come over and you're just like, hey, want to grind a couple games? I'm, yeah, okay. Um, versus, you know, 
go to the shops a couple times a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I work at one, so... Yeah, yeah. it's a bit easier. <laughs> I don't really get a choice. Um, yeah, and as I mentioned, this is going to come up quite a bit, mm-hmm. is coming from other card games, like, you know, you usually meet up at the local shop. Like, it's just... It's kind of been that way since, like, Friday Night Magic. Right. Where, you know, it's... It's kind of like the place to be because that's where you meet the most mm-hmm. biggest variety of decks. Right. Like it's always fun to play on the kitchen table. Yeah. It's always fun to just like you know pull up a coffee table and play a couple of games. But like, there's something right about. Um... I mean, the shop just has the atmosphere, and we'll get to that later because that yeah. ties into another question that we asked. Yeah. Um, but I do also. I mean, it all. This also has something to do with uh, a third question that we asked, which has is basically about uh, whether your friends play the game or not. It's a lot mm-hmm. easier to play games at home if you have friends or family that are into the game as well. Yeah. Um, so we'll move on to the next question, which is where do you prefer to play? Not where yeah. do you play. It's where do you where do you prefer or wish you could play? Yeah. And this one I'll kind of have the same kind of curve as the last one. Mm-hmm. So home, fifteen people said home. Uh, three people said public place. Three people said online. Eighty one percent of or eighty one people said local shops, and then twenty four people said uh, like a balance two of two place. places. And then one person just screamed weather spoons. Um, Watch because of this, we're in like an ARG or something. I swear, there, there's going to be like God. some video of like a deep web uh, game that started with a random podcast about Final Fantasy saying weather spoons. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, do I have a video to show you later that, oh I, that reminds me? Um, but yeah, w- this is once again not a huge surprise. Like local shops are just kind of the place to be for card games. Mm-hmm. Once again, that's where you meet the most the biggest variety of decks. That's where people have. You know the stuff that you want. That's how you meet new people. Like that's yeah. how you learn to play card games, and that's how yeah, you, you get. You gotta buy better. product promos, sleeves, 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 um, everything, accessories. Yeah, and then obviously that's where you're gonna be having the tournaments. Like yeah. you can have a fun little tournament in on your kitchen table, but you're not gonna prize out for that. Yeah, most you're not gonna have the tournament software, which I mean it's not great, but yeah. it's something. Um, you're not going to have that prizing support unless somebody buys a box or everybody pitches in for a box. Yeah. You're not going to be able to just get sleeves. You're not going to be able to just get de- deck boxes and binders and whatever else. Yeah. So, um, and theoretically, you might not have some expert who knows the game um, yeah. unless you're the expert or you are close to the expert. Yeah. So, um, next question, the follow up is what is it? that makes you enjoy playing where you prefer to play? Mm -hmm. Um, What draws you to that place you prefer? Um, And so 42 players, give or take a couple, they had, the answers were kind of vague. Um, 42 people said individuals or community members or shop employees are what keep them coming back to that place that they prefer to play. Um, So uh, 19 people said it was the prizing support or like support of the game. Uh, product and events um, about 36 people with some overlap said convenience comfort or atmosphere is what brought them back uh, or keeps them going to that location um, five people uh, said other or miscellaneous uh, a lot of those were kind of funny um, <laughs> shout, out, shout out to all the people who <laughs> put in jokes <laughs> yeah um, I think it was one person for either this one or a different question said um I, no, it was a later one, and I'll get to that later, mm. um, but someone basically completely called out, there's a couple <laughs> that called each other out <laughs> oh, in that's different really questions, funny. and I don't oh, think that's they're really, really cute. it seemed like it, it seemed yeah. like a couple, um, and then about five of people said, I own slash work at the LGS, yeah. so I, it, like myself, it's, you, you don't get a choice, you're just yeah. there. Yeah, um, but there's also that kind of like nice familiarity to it, right. and then being able to use your employee discount doesn't hurt either. That's huge yeah. for me, man. I get those boxes so good. Yeah, um, and once again, that's not a huge surprise. Once again, local place is kind of the place to be. Yeah, um, and the rest of the people who didn't answer one of those other options, it was literally everybody else said uh, exposure of the game, deck building advice, or variety of formats of events, players. Mm-hmm. And competitive nature, yeah, which is a little vague. But held it's... them well. That I mean, I summed it up yeah. with that because okay, there was yeah, a yeah. lot. There were a lot of people who said that yeah. just in a lot of different. They ways. They just want to be there with other people. Yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. understandable. Yeah. So, um, so our next question was: Do any close friends or family play FFTCG with you? Um, Twenty-four people said no. Fifty-five said one to two. Uh, several people said thirty-five. 
or, there, 35 whoops. people said several of their friends. <laughs> 35 apparently. people said several, yes. Um, all or most was seven, and then my friends and TCG group completely overlapped at six. Um, so this is... Uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, I've seen very similar situations mm-hmm. to all of these, yeah. where there were people who were like, oh yeah, I'm the only person I know that plays Yu-Gi. There were always the people that are like, oh, I'm trying to put an LGS with like one or two of my friends. Mm-hmm. And then there were the people that they very much so know the people at their LGS to the point where yep. like, they're the they, super that, tight. Yeah, well, group. I mean, that's like our, that's like our shop for yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like everybody's good friends with our manager, yeah. and like we all we're all in good terms. We all have good rapport with them. Yeah. But some of those players are like, oh, I play there because I'm friends with like the staff. Yeah. So yeah, it, no, it's it, that one. Yeah, this doesn't surprise me at all. I'm, yeah. Those are nice answers. Yeah. Um, and then another question going further down we're getting we're getting pretty far up here um was how often does your group gather with or without you um and so 29 people said rarely or infrequently uh 81 people said one to two days a week that's what i expected um 16 people said three to four days a week and one person said the group as a whole gathers five or more days a week basically That's every day bonkers. so th- you might as well be people... like that might have been like oh, an entire lgs where everyone plays yeah right <laughs> like jesus lucky bastard yeah honestly um uh, but yeah, one to two days a week. This, that's something that's going to come up a lot. When yeah. We say it, like how many times a week? And that feeds into our next question yeah. very well, which is: Would you play more often if you could? A uh, hundred and six people said yes, mm-hmm. which uh, again is another expected answer. Um, calm down, Bnet. I thought I logged out of you. Um, and then one person said, no, I wouldn't play more often. Yeah. And <laughs> Shout 20, out to that one person. <laughs> 20, 20 people said, I play about as much as I want to play. Yeah. So good for you, yeah. 20 people. Um, yeah. And I, I feel this one. Like, everybody, yeah. especially when we put out the survey, a big thing with our play group is that we were always like, we want to play more, we want to play more. Yeah, right. We can't. We don't have the time well, or the, energy yeah, to do that. The amount of times it was put in the chat, hey, who can gather tonight? And everyone's just, like, working, 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 sorry, like, yeah. busy. Oh, I got my kids. Out or, of town or, to this week. Yeah, or, like, yeah. moving this weekend, whatever. Like, shit, this shit's in the way. Um, And so a now we're getting to some of the unrelated stuff, uh, yeah. kind of the more varied questions. Uh, do you prefer organized play or casual play? Um, 38 people said casual slash less serious play. 16 people said tournament or organized play, and 73 people said they want a healthy balance of both. Yeah. And that's about that's about right. What I, yeah, is what I expect. Yeah. That's actually really where our play group is right mm-hmm. now. Where um, right now we're doing a lot of casual play, but it's yeah. because it's the holiday season. Well, tournament season's over. Uh, yeah, so. but at the same time, we still are seeing when a box is we're seeing mm-hmm. more serious uh, events. Yep. Um, but it's good to know that. We're not the only ones. Yeah, that's really encouraging. Like, I hate to bring it up again, but, like, a big thing with Yu-Gi-Oh! is every event was, like, tournament play. Yeah, it's always serious. It was very rarely just, like, casuals or, like, less serious games. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm glad that we are playing Final Fantasy where it's just, like, I don't feel like investing today. I don't feel like putting $10 into this tournament. It makes us feel like we're kind of doing it right, quote, unquote. Yeah, I just want to sit down and I want to play this game. That's ultimately, like, what it comes to. Um, just sometimes, like, it's... Right. You, you have to watch out for that competitive burnout where you don't want to do, you know, 500 IQ plays all the time. Sometimes I want to mess with my, like, silly... I'm trying to think of, like, what a silly deck would be. I want to mess with my silly Dogaridia deck and kind of <laughs> see how that does against, right. like, Waff or uh, uh, Cold Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then next up we have which format do you consider your favorite? Picking up to two. Uh, so 119 people collectively said standard format or two deck or whatever you want to call it, regular constructed uh, tournament play. Uh, 32 people said title. Uh, seven people said two v twos. Nine people said boss battle, and four people said some other format or just left it blank. Which yeah. how'd you enter a blank response? You press it, space I, once, obviously. No, actually, it doesn't let that happen. Oh, it doesn't let that through. So somebody yeah. I, it must have made maybe they deleted their answer. I don't know. Yeah. Um, um, so obviously this is this isn't very surprising. One hundred and nineteen people said standard or two deck. That's just kind of what everything's run. Um, it's easiest to build a deck for that as well. Yeah, uh, and then same with like right behind that is title at thirty two. Mm-hmm. Like it's a big thing with Final Fantasy right now is that we don't have we have these other formats. They're just not explored as much. Yeah. Um, 
So we are kind of relying on standard, and it's just kind of familiar. It's what you, mm-hmm. it's the core game, really. Yeah, it's the straight, most um, straightforward. Though, admittedly, something, I'm glad that seven people said 2v2, because I loved 2v2. I love 2v2. I so much They're fun so with fun. it. And I'm really sad that we don't do it more. I really want to play boss battle more. I yeah. want to be the boss. Yeah. I, it's, I, oh, I it, need to build a deck for that. Yeah, the only issue with boss battles is it's just like, I'm putting together this whole deck to not use it and only use yeah. it like once a month. <laughs> right? Uh, uh, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, um, and here's where we get some of those really open-ended questions that I yeah. had to kind of summarize the best or most common ones or the yeah. ones that stood out to us. Yeah. Um, so we got the 127 answers here. Uh, what keeps you playing or what makes you want to take a break? Yeah. Um, um, so some people said like meta for leaving or for staying. It's balanced and super strong. Like, you always have a deck that's going to be good against something yep. else. Um, so a lot of people were like, the meta, it's it's super strong, yeah. and I like that, or I don't like that, yeah. and that's making me change my opinion. Yeah. Um, a ridiculous amount of people said theme, characters, and card design are all yeah. huge for them. Uh, new sets always bring them back, Yeah. Uh, which is about what I'd expect out of a lot of our players. Yeah. And well, that's we're going to eventually talk about that in kind of a whole episode. Where, mm-hmm. uh, I do want to do like a card design episode where we talk about oh my God, a yeah. lot of the instinctive designs. We'll have to do a few of them. We we'll will. have to do like my top five and your top five like yeah. custom designs. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also have the episode you're doing with Andrew yeah, coming the, up. Yeah, the flavor episode. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, so, second is good mechanics and game flow. Uh, yeah, a lot that of makes people, a lot of sense. Yeah, a few people were like, I just like how this game works. Yeah. Uh, community always drags me back in. That was a really common one. Yeah. That was very common. Uh, lack of products and events make people want to take a break for a while. Some players just take a break if they know a bigger event isn't coming for a while. Mm-hmm. That's what we kind of saw when we it put out the survey. very much what we were seeing. Where it was a lot of people were like, hey, I'm going to be focusing on life for two months while we wait for Crystal Cups. And then we have that one psycho bastard who says, I just keep coming back hoping that Mono Fire is going to get its day <laughs> in the, the limelight. Oh my god. Um, I wish I could talk. Yeah. <laughs> please, please, if you watch this video, please comment. Because I want to know how you feel now. Because <laughs> this was right, like... This was before Worlds and Nats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this was like not too late after we made our fire episode where we are like, fire's not going to be yeah, good. Yeah, we made our fire we made like oh mono fire is shit yeah. episode and then like right after nats hit and fire like actually was relevant in the two deck format yeah so yeah, yeah i'm still playing mono fire i have a blast with it your mono fire is hilarious oh yeah um, um but a variety of players and decks and strategies available really helps uh some people find their way back to the game uh, especially with anticipating stuff coming in the future yeah um, and we had one, we had one or two people who said I'm a community leader slash tournament organizer, so I don't feel like I can take a break. And I want to talk to you personally, um, at the moment because I have felt that so hard in the past. Um, because you kind of feel, I, at least for me, you get that feel where it's like if I tell people I'm taking a break, or if I'm not playing at the shop when they come in, or like when I don't play with them when they come in, it, it they kind of feel like. It's kind of a drag. It really demotivates a lot of people. We're like, well, sh- damn, if Eric doesn't want to play, man, what's going on? Like, it's not a what's wrong. It's like, is he okay? It's a what's wrong with the game right now because they know how invested I am in the game. Um, so I understand that feeling, uh, whether we're on the same page or not. Uh, keep your chin up. Uh, the drag happens. Y- you kind of feel that kind of in the trenches kind of situation but i don't know i've been able to drag myself out of it and if you ever need to talk about it you know what send us a send us a comment or a message i'll i'll, I'll be glad to yeah. chat with you yeah um you want to take care of the last one <laughs> uh, affordability and access to product helps players stay but lack of product hurts a lot um this is kind of a unique problem to funnel. No, that's a lie. That's a f- um, completely gonna, falsehood. I completely forgot about Weiss players. I completely forgot Dragon about... Dragon Ball players. Dragon Ball players. I totally forgot about Force, Force of, of Will, Will players. players. Bless your heart if you play Vanguard Force players, Will. actually. Buddy Ven- fight players. Yeah. yeah. So we're. it's kind of funny because we're in this... Like, oh, I'd love to have an episode about this. Uh, kind of the A-League and B-League of TCGs. Because mm-hmm. we are really in this... B league, almost C league of it. We're we're mid B to like high high C yeah. right now. Yeah, because like we're sort of outlasting Dragon Ball Super, but nah. because ARG or um was it ARG? I think, I think it was it's ARG. A- I think it was ARG just royally boned a bunch of different. There's, there's a whole lot of stuff going down between them and Bandai. Mm. Um, 
the product is becoming harder to get for yeah. Dragon Ball. Collectors ruined a lot of stuff. Yeah, and even Final um, Fantasy seeing a little bit of that. I know a distributor recently dropped it, but at the same time, we've also had a couple distributors mm-hmm. pick it up. Yeah, um, that is true. So obviously, we've kind of had this rocky path yeah. going forward with I them mean, as well. I mean, when I went to the distributor's warehouse the other day with my manager, uh, I happened to be the, one, the driver. Yeah. Like, we, we had to pick stuff up, so I went with. Yeah. Um, and we saw they had basically everything except for opus one and opus eight yeah they had everything else they had two three f- they had two three four uh six seven nine and ten yeah so they were missing opus one and opus five yeah basically and opus eight yeah big surprise. um but they had a lot of other stuff they had at least two cases of everything else yeah i picked up for the store the last two boxes of opus seven yeah because why wouldn't you yeah um and then Will went and bought the whole box <laughs> that I was going to get. But that's yeah. fine. Um, um, what was I going to mention about... But the game is very affordable. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. That's a yeah, really that big is deal. A, that is a huge thing about it. And I, I just get a laugh of it because I think Good Games still has like... They still have almost a box of everything. <laughs> yup. And I'm still surprised at that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it's an ongoing problem. And hopefully as the game grows larger, as... Distributors see that there's more demand that'll start yeah. to change. Well, the, part of the issue, don't forget, is Amazon. Yeah. So many players put in chat, hey, there's boxes for like 60 bucks right now. Yeah. And it's just like, there's a lot of other people who come in and bless their hearts. They're like, guys, please don't buy from Amazon. I know it says it's Squeenix selling the boxes from them. But honestly, like the shops need the, they need it because they the shops need the business more importantly they need to be able to say to their distributors hey we're selling this product is yeah. working it's making it out the door uh people want it um and that's the bigger deal is not that you're just buying it from a shop um yes that's ma- that matters but yeah. the fact that distributors get word from them yeah. people want this game yeah that's huge like rudy talks about that a lot with mm-hmm. final fantasy yeah support your lgs yeah um, anyway, moving on to the next one. Um, if you play in tournaments, what do you think is the best prizing? Uh, so nine people said that they don't play in tournaments. Understandable. Uh, 67 people said cards, packs, and promos, which is, you know, the standard fare. Mm-hmm. Uh, 39 people said Final Fantasy merch-crafts. Nine people said that they want uh, other, which uh, mostly boiled down to trophies and or cash. Okay, yeah. Um which that's not a standard tournament thing for games outside the kind of big three. Yeah. Um, so that's not likely unless this game gets ridiculously big. Yeah. Um, and then two people said they don't really have a preference or it depends on the level of tournament. Mm-hmm. So like locals, yeah, it's going to be packs. But like if they're in like a crystal cup, someone said that they went to a, a local qualifier and they got paid out like out the ass with packs and like, food and stuff yeah um they wanted their money's worth for the event uh and they got it yeah. and then they were like yeah but then like a month later i went to a crystal cup and we got like jack yeah we got like completely shafted after all that driving and like the money i paid to enter yeah and all the competing i got like maybe five packs or yeah. something like that and like they felt super shafted and that's yeah. fair yeah and that's one of the issues about like that's why crystal cups because right now they're currently at like kind of event centers right Sort of, yeah. Sort Some of, of they're sometimes at tournaments, like, mm-hmm. or at uh, LGS and stuff, yeah. but, um, anyway, moving on to the next one. Uh, so, what does your local group or shop offer to keep you? Um, and I'll let you go into this, because this was... Little... Yeah, this one, we got 96 responses. Um, the large majority of them were redundant answers from previous questions, um, but it really boiled down to the shops themselves, uh, the camaraderie of other players, the convenience of things, um, of like the location and whatnot. Like so a lot of people who said like, oh, it's just the closest shop to me, so it makes sense that I go there. Um, and then some people answered with, I don't have a choice or nothing because I don't go to the shop anymore because they can't get promos or product. Um, and that one hurts, but that is a painful truth. That's a big, that's a, that's a rough pill we gotta swallow. Yeah. Um, so yeah that one uh, that's pretty much what i heard the most of there were a couple smaller answers in there yeah but it uh, there were actually quite a few people who were just like uh they don't or like there were a couple really rude answers so we're just not gonna talk about those (laughs) yeah but at the same time they do 
um, they do kind of have this point where it's just like, you know, we, this goes back to the last thing that we talked about where it's like, well, they can't get product and mm-hmm. that's kind of what's hurting us. And it's just like, yeah. I want to keep going back, but if they don't keep having mm-hmm. Final Fantasy stuff, I'm just buying sleeves all the time. Like I know a lot of people, um, have contacted our, the NA rep about it, RB, yeah. Um, and RB has said, yes, we're aware of the lack of promos in NA. Yeah. We know there's an uneven distribution across all these different shops. We're yeah. working on it. Yeah. Um, and they have made, I actually noticed when I went to the distributor's office yeah. or warehouse that they have now promo packs mm. where it gives you one foil, seven non-foil, yeah. says, here's your kit. Yeah. Um, give these out to tournament players. Yeah. Don't give these out to casual players unless you just haven't run a tournament in a while. Yeah. And that's a good idea, yeah. Um, um, <laughs> Cause that's that's how promos go away fast. Yeah, like I'm not always gonna jump. I'm as someone who's been very critical of Yu-Gi-Oh. I I tend to always, I rarely go to defend the company. Yeah. But a big thing about Final Fantasy TCG is we're still pretty new. Like we're coming up on our third anniversary, or mm-hmm. we've had our third anniversary. Like yep. it's we're on our way, but we're not quite there yet. Um, and that's kind of the big issue is like when we get bigger and hopefully we will get bigger, it looks like we're getting bigger. That's when hopefully we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. Yeah. So, um, moving on is then what could your local shop do to improve your experience? Mm -hmm. Uh, 97 people responded to this. So one more person responded to this one than the last one. Yeah. And then Um, these were just kind of general answers. Um, so ones that we saw a lot were more product, or events, more events, which makes sense. Yeah, which, once again, just kind of ties into the general theme of this, where it's just like, we need more stuff. Um, and then advertise more in demo days. That's yeah, and this one, one, I see a lot of complaints about lack of advertisement from both yeah. shops and Square Enix. Yeah. So that one I, I, that one I expected a lot of. Promos um, and unique pricing. Um, so number one, that could tie into like the fact that we have lacks of promos. But uh, something that you guys talked about in our episode, Building a Community, mm-hmm. uh, link in description, as said before. <laughs> We're just going to post the link in description like 10 times. Yep. Um, but uh, a big thing that Bill does and you guys and you're pursuing is giving Final Fantasy prizes as prizes. Yeah. And with the upcoming Bahamut Brawl Facebook link in description. I was just I'm giving say, you a lot yeah. of work today, Eric. Um, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a random video. Also, link in description. Also, I like to be the shameless douche that's just like, yeah, we came up with that name, yeah, but um, yeah, because uh, we did. But no, yeah. it's not here nor there. We'll be commentating yeah. for it, by the way. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, you'll see us there. Yeah, it's, you'll see us there. Yeah. Um, like Bahamut Brawl is we for Bahamut Brawl. There's gonna be um, a ridiculous amount of signed prizes. Yeah, it's a lot of signed prizes. It's a lot of memorabilia. There's gonna be some pack. Uh, yeah, there's going to be pack payout yeah. and whatnot. But on top of that, there's a lot of a mono signed stuff. There's, uh, I think there's a poster signed there's by a lot the original of artist for Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which is there's beautiful. quite a few different things. Yeah. You'll you'll see the list of prizes on the Facebook event page. Yeah. Um, um, and then some people here said uh, they, you know, the shop already does support us well, and we appreciate it. That's good. We're yeah. glad to hear that. And yeah. then a few, uh, two people. Um, in particular stood out by saying we wish the entry for tournaments was cheaper. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what events they're running or what they're charging. Yeah, because I do know that there's some, at least in Yu-Gi-Oh, there were some LGSs that they're like, we're charging you 15 bucks, but you get a better payout. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, if you're playing casual, or if you're, like, once again to reference Yu-Gi-Oh, if I'm trying to put a fluffle deck, I'm not paying 20 bucks to enter. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I'm, the, the risk of loss is too ex- great. Exactly. Um, so. And that much I understand. Though I did get a laugh when I saw cheaper entry because the last time I heard that was uh, fighting games. <laughs> there, was a, there was a pro player who was trying to jack up the price of entry mm. so he could win more in the pot and people were like, mm, can you not do that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, but speaking of prizing, what is the minimum prizing that motivates any given player to compete in an event? Um, and we got the, that was a mandatory question. So um, most people said packs, boxes, or promos. Um, a couple people said money or trophies. Like I said before, good luck with that one. Um, and then a couple of people just said getting their money's worth out of the event. As long as they had, you know, a good amount of uh, prizing coming back to them or entry coming back to them uh, or the experience was good, then, you know, then that's worth it for them, which I'm good. glad to hear yeah. that. Um, we had a lot of unhelpful answers. A lot of people were just like, 
oh well you know if they could give me like snacks and like yeah. I'm like okay guys chill yeah um they're not gonna they're not gonna wine and dine you just because they you paid five bucks down there like yeah. chill and then my um, personal favorite answer love for the game dash healthy competition bless I, you people yeah and that's you know that's a big motivator that i have especially coming from fighting games where you know that was fighting games were a very social experience and same with card games card games are an incredibly social experience yeah, they kind of force you to be yeah and obviously the packs help the promos help yeah and you know i'd prefer to go to a place that has both of those if not or ra then rather than not but at the same time if there's someone that i really want to see at a place mm -hmm. and i don't like the pricing i'm gonna go and see that person <laughs> right yeah um it's just a weighing your options kind of thing yeah um so we're nearing the end here yeah. um this is one that we just kind of threw out I yeah mean, this is for a, kind of a greedy reason well yeah because we'll see if we hop on this but um, would a deck building workshop be good for new players 110 people said yes 17 people said no i kind of understand the no the no yeah because, I, I get where you're coming from like obviously a person has to learn the game first but um yeah, yeah, if you guys have any interesting ideas for how to do a deck building workshop, or if you guys have done it, something like that similar at your LGS, uh, we'd love to hear about it. Um. So uh, the next question here, I'm trying to move something in the, in the spreadsheet here, but uh, it's not working. Yeah. Um, so I asked, uh, this one was a kind of a question for and from specifically me. Um, I asked people, tournament organizers, how do you motivate players to keep coming or bring new players in uh, and I got 54 responses um, the the biggest most common ones uh, were offering advice prizing and game support and diversity of events um, and that one if you take Chicago as a microcosm of this extremely accurate um, I almost want to say I'm expecting Bill to have put something like that in. Yeah. Um, because that one right there has been something that has gotten a lot of players for Chicago. Yeah. Uh, the other most common one was, I'm actually not good at this, and I'd really like your your advice and help on improving in this regard, uh -huh. um, which we would be happy to provide for you. In the episode, Building a Community, link in description. <laughs> <laughs> but also in personal messages or private private yeah, discussion. Who, uh, so I'll, I'll be one hundred percent honest. I'm not going to be helping on that. But that's, Eric yeah, will that'll be more be than me. happy to help you. I'll see if Bill wants to do yeah. another discussion on it, or at least talk about yeah. that. At Comment some point. down below. Message us on uh, YouTube or message us on Reddit. Can you message on Reddit? Yeah, you can message on Reddit. Reddit. Yeah, Reddit much. has a chat feed, like a personal chat now. Oh, dope. Yeah. yeah. So hit us up on. Even Reddit, we're at it at ShintotoCast, as you can Yeah, we'll put, our, we'll put our um, info there as well. But yeah, feel free to reach out to us for um, that. And then the less common ones were, like, people want discounts. For, this was actually a really creative one. Um, I thought this was new. Discounts on early or pre-registration for an event, which, huh. that's cool. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um, I don't think I'll be able to steal that for my sh the shop I work at just yeah. because of we're, we're already as low as we can get. But that would help. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, huh. Good thinking there. Um, and then some people just said being personal and friendly. The approachability uh, is really huge for a lot of things like that. So that's a good thing to recognize. Um, and some people, a good amount of people said that they want like a ranking system or recognition uh, and more meta discussion or analysis from their, or for, as a tournament organizer that helps and players wanted that as well. Um, so that's an idea we've had. Um, my manager even came up with kind of at the same time with you, yeah. Ty. Uh, the idea of poo-poo points. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, Ty collects poo-poos meticulously and yep. methodically. So um, he has a massive, massive stack and stock of poo-poos. Yeah. I'm, so if we made, like, a point system out of the poo-poo cards... Yeah. I'm willing to uh, flex on the people who are like, oh, check it out, I bought 70 electro electric jellyfish. I've got over 200 poo-poos now. Oh, you got well over 200 now. And I haven't done a buyout in a while. You need to do so a buyout. So watch those poo-poo prices. They might go up a cent after I pick up a hundred for a dollar. Yeah, boy. <laughs> um, and so coming to our second to last uh, question here is group and community leaders, how do you get new players? This one kind of ties into the previous question. We had 93 responses here. Um, so so I, I just grabbed, I cherry-picked the best answers. Um, and some of the most common ones from that also came down to things like playing in the shops, carrying extra decks for demos with friends or new players, uh, and give away cheap cards. Um, we've all got a bazillion extra junk H's. Like, 
I don't think Shelk is ever going to see competitive play. But, like, it's a fun card for pauper decks. Um, You're really going to be regretting that come, I don't know, two years later, where four-color Shulk is the epitome of the <laughs> maybe meta. i mean the onion knights deck that aaron put together can kind of run it but yeah, like yeah. it's a pretty niche use case anyway exactly. Sorry. um that was fine uh a lot of people said uh i show people the game when they find out they like final fantasy so if you bump into someone and you you know you're talking about final fantasy you're like hey have you heard of the tcg like you heard of the card game you played it and they'll be like there's a tcg and i'll be like yeah i've had if i had a nickel for every time i heard that i wouldn't have to work at my job um other people said consistency and showing up to play, uh, and that's very accurate. If I'm not there, I've noticed that, um, it was funny, in that period of time where I had to take time off from work for family stuff, um, the, the community at my shop kind of just dwindled. Like, nobody wanted to go. Uh, um, yeah. And I don't know if that's a me thing, or just they were lacking the tournament organizer in general thing. Yeah. But, like, I heard from everybody at work, there were, you know, a bunch of people were like, we haven't blown, we haven't, like, fired Final Fantasy in a while. Like, uh. how, can you just tell the guys to, like, keep coming? I was like, I have. <laughs> if I'm not there, I guess they don't want to be there. I yeah. don't know. So, um, the consistency helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then, most importantly, this one I think stands out the most just because it is so important here. Uh, patience, friendliness, and making it fun for the new players. Um... And this is good advice from the community leaders. I agree with you 1,000%. Uh, it's not fun if you show people how to play by like doing a seven card combo against them and then wiping them and then hitting them for like six damage in one turn. Yeah. Um, Shoutouts out to Woff. Yeah, right? Where I have to explain, oh, because I played this one card for free, I get to deal 4K whenever I swing with something, so I'm going to wipe your board. Yeah, uh, mitigate, more, just basically miti mitigate those feel-bad moments. Yeah. Uh, and I'm stealing that from somebody else who commented here. Um, and then here we're going into the additional comments from just you guys in general. Like, what else did you want to say to us? Um, and we got 31 responses there. Uh, and this is kind of the end of the whole survey here. Yeah. So uh, some people said, we need more content creators that, as that don't assume we know everything I mistyped here. Okay. As a typo. Um, we want more content creators that are teaching players. Um, and so that one, I mean, hi, that's like exactly what we yeah, do here. Yeah, that's what we've been kind of trying to aim for, especially when we had our cycling episode. Yeah, um, cycles and, like and our aggro combo yeah. control like, stuff. Like we'll mention, we'll kind of mention things offhand. Yeah. Um, or we'll just kind of mention a card and not explain it. Like, I just mentioned the rain earlier. Like, it's, yeah. it happens. Um, but, but, yeah, it, that is something. Like, a lot of people, they're basically, I'm, I'm really paraphrasing these answers yeah. here, but a lot of people were like, yeah, a lot of these podcasts just talk about, like, the hardcore meta decks. Yeah. And, like, they talk about, like, two cards in the deck and why they shouldn't be there. Yeah. And they don't talk about the whole rest of the deck, and we're yeah. super confused because we don't know the meta well. Yeah. So, you know, we feel a little bit of that right here because that's, that's what our podcast is for. We're trying that's to be educational. Trying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're here for you guys. Um, one person said altered cards are awesome. Yeah. And I like them. And 100% we, agree. We agree with that. Yeah. Um, a lot of people were asking for advice on kickstarting or boosting their scene, yeah. uh, which Once we again, already mentioned. Yeah, me feel free to message us or check building a community link in description. <laughs> Making you do a lot of work, Eric. <clears throat> the link better be in there. I've heard, for every time that I mentioned it, the link that's down in the description for building a community. <laughs> it's like seven <laughs> copies of the link. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, and then a couple people said, hey, you know, we'd like a better organized play system. Uh, yeah. And I know that uh, Square Enix is kind of working on it, kind of yeah. not. They're kind of I know, I know people are. Feet. I know people are frustrated with the ticket system right now, but... And as, mind you, this is me just kind of guessing. Like, I'm taking a shot in the dark here. That ticket system will lead on to something. Yeah. Like, if there's rumblings that they're working on it. And mm -hmm. from RB's post and from what I can see, I, I'm i being optimistic here. Yeah, I, I um, same. But in being optimistic, I think they're going to do it. And, like, we're... We're starting to see the skeleton of it. The more we show them that we want it yeah. and that we're that we're using it, yeah. uh, the more that they're going to put effort into it. Because you know anybody who runs any kind of software, they know that you yeah. take feedback and you implement improvements. Yeah, because that's even so, been a question that's popped up on the Reddit a couple times. Very, yeah, is people just saying, "Hey, 
Uh, is there any like ticket <clears throat> system or something like that, or like do yep. I have my Final Fantasy number? And I'm like, mm, no. Uh, or like, yeah, you have this. They're like, what? What do you use it for? What's yeah. the purpose of it? And we're like, we don't know yet, yep. but maybe one day we'll get there. So yeah, and then um, so a lot of people said that we need better access to promos and products. Trust 100% me, agree. we agree. We're not the people to talk to about that, but yeah. we will do what we can to forward the information on. Yeah. Um, we don't have personal connections to RB or any of the reps, but yeah. like if we ever manage to meet up with them. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be glad to take the feedback. No, oh, I'm, I'm going to lean really close to the mic. If if you guys want to reach out to us and give us a spoiler card or two, I got you, fam. Uh, yeah, we yeah. love that. That'd be great. <laughs> um, I'm gonna s- shameless self-promotion. Yeah, right. But, um, um, yeah, so it's... Yeah, we agree with you guys. Yeah, the uh, promos and product need to be more commonly and evenly distributed, um, but they're they're doing what they can, especially with these tins, giving out Opus 1 through 3 stuff. That's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, they're... It's interesting because they are slowly getting there. A big thing, so obviously you mentioned the tin. Um, a big thing with our play group in particular is we were like, we really wish we could get that Yishtola. We really wish we could get that Husfelger. Yeah. Like full arts. Like I remember I was really mad because I left China or we left had Japan. a yeah, you layover were... in China. Yeah, that's right. Where I could have just driven out and grabbed a box of Opus Five and gotten that promo. And I just didn't, you know, because I didn't know about it at the time. Mm-hmm. But then I find out about it and like, Come on! <laughs> yeah, oh, that's so awful. they uh, once again we're kind of starting to see these rumblings of you know they're listening to that and mm-hmm. they're working on it and the Tifa tin I think is like the perfect example. Yeah, it's a their their implementation of feedback is a super slow burn, but we have we word it. from on high we get it. They're trying. Yeah, like yeah. it'll happen eventually if we yeah. just give them our our feedback and our trust. Yeah, that's and, my guess. And you can see that in like a lot of the promos where there's a card that it's just like, oh, we really wish this card was easier to get to, and they're like, here's Illua as a promo. I was just about to say <laughs> Illua as a promo. Illua, oh my god, that card dropped like 50 cents now. It used to be like a $7 card. Uh-huh. Now That's it's like 50 six... cents. Really? Yeah, it's 50 oh god, cents. I Illua in a hot minute. Because, I, because Dylan, Dylan needed some yeah. for his deck, and I was just like, what's the price on it? And I was like, yeah. 50 cents each? Dude, just take them. Let's I mean, take a play set. Yeah. I mean, that's also what happens when they put it into a starter deck as well. Yeah, that helps too. Um, but lastly, and you know, kind of most importantly, a lot of people actually said that they just generally appreciated the survey and appreciate us, and we appreciate your appreciation. Yeah. Thank you guys for your feedback. Thank you for answering the survey. Yes, we can't thank you enough. Thank you um, for listening. Thank you for watching and all that. Um, and this isn't the last survey we're going to do. We're going to do another one Yeah, we'll eventually. do a follow-up eventually. I feel like this is something... Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit in our next episode, but uh, I want to start kind of putting in these yearly traditions for us. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. And a survey... I'd like... Screw it. We're calling it the state of play survey, where we're no, the state of the game. Dude, no, that's too cheesy. You're too cheesy. Straight. No, but we'll find forward. something. Like it, find this is name. something that we want to do yeah. again. We, we have a meta analysis. Like, a bunch stuff. of episodes. Well, right. But we um, we're working on the meta analysis yeah. video, so that's yeah. going to be and a that's another from, yearly episode. <laughs> follow up from last year. Exactly. It's been a whole year. Um, no, no the, that episode year. was eight months ago. Was it really only eight right, months ago? I thought that was like nine, ten months right ago. Right before Opus. Eight came out, I want to say. Huh. Yeah, yeah. It was right before Opus Eight came out. Okay, I thought I ju- it was a little further. I rewatched back. that entire episode today. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, but I thought it was just a little bit further back. Oh well. Yeah, it's 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 weird to think about that, but yeah. So it was exactly eight months, or almost exactly eight months ago. Nice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is something that I want to make a yearly thing. We'll throw out a survey in November, kind of like around <laughs> Worlds. Yeah, next um, year. Trying to get how people feel about the game at. At the end of Worlds. Right, right. And then be able to make an episode, talk about it in December. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, once again, this is kind of a large scope and uh, that, but... Yeah. I mean, hey, we're am- we have ambition. We're yeah. showing that we actually have drive. Yeah, and we're, we're at an Mana now. drive. Yeah. <laughs> Overdrive. <laughs> Overdrive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so thanks for kind of riding with us until the end of the year by the time this episode comes out it's going to be close to christmas i don't know if we're going to have another episode out before yeah christmas. no i'm going to edit this and uh, we'll be lucky if we get the meta analysis out by christmas yeah i mean but we still have everything else yeah. coming up we have other holidays to yeah. worry about but so. push them shove merry christmas everybody happy holidays happy hanukkah um that's especially for our group <laughs> yeah we have quite a few jewish players actually yeah. so that's cool yeah. um, um but yeah, so thanks for listening, thanks for watching, um, and once again, thanks for answering our survey.
Much appreciated. See you guys later. All right. Bye-bye. Well,